Hi there, my friend and friends. Sometimes we just come across something that looks fun or cool and we want to see if we can make it. And one of my favorite series to do here on YouTube, which I haven't done in a little while now, is to make something from scratch completely unplanned. So you can see sort of my thought process in creating something, how I manage to troubleshoot things when I run into problems, and all that good stuff like that. And we're going to be doing that by trying to recreate this fun, kind of cool hover effect that I recently found over on CodePen. That's by Gan. And uh, the code, the original CodePen for this will be linked down below as well as all of my code on how I try and figure this out. So let's jump right into it. I'll show you a little bit. You can see um, this is the effect. Once again, I have it here. I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to look at um, Guyan's code to be able to do this. I'm just going to try and do it on my own. And I got a few pictures to be able to do it. Um, so if this will be my background image. Uh, this will be the front one of appearing on the front like that. And then I also found this Yoda Star Wars logo that could work for the bottom part here. Um, yeah, we're going to see what we can do with it um, and, and do it. The colors on this might be a little harder to work with, but we'll, we'll play around and see what we can do. Um, I usually do these unedited, but I'm going to try something new with this one where I will edit things, but just to like keep the highlights and not the parts where I'm just staring blankly trying to figure things out. Uh, so let's jump on over <laughs> to my index. And the first thing obviously we need, let's just do, uh, we'll just call it Yoda. Um, it's our card, but you know, it, it's a one-off. Uh, when I do fun things like this, it really doesn't matter so much on that side of things like class naming and stuff. It's more about the experimentation and trying to figure things out. Um, I'm probably going to do it. I guess that would be easy enough to have it as a background image. I'm just looking at the shadows I see around there too that we're going to need. That I guess would be a pseudo element. Uh, that could even be, it could be a pseudo element and it could be another background image, but doing, we can't animate background images. So I think it'd be a pseudo element with a gradient on it. Um, but we'll see with that. Um, so I guess we, we do need the logo and we need this guy. Um, so we would have my dot logo and the other one, I guess. And I don't know if these would have to be divs, but I'm going to do them um, as divs and then put the images inside them. I don't even know if I need to, let's try doing it just as images then actually. So let's just do uh, image times two. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if it would be beneficial to have it in a div or not. Uh, so let's say a class on the first one will be my logo, like I said before, and then the class on this one is going to be, uh, we'll just call it front image, just to make it a bit more clear what that one is. Uh, the other thing with this, just really fast, um, I'll bring the actual images on my own version in in a second, but if you look at Guyan's one cool thing with it, like here they actually, the cape was like cut to the side, uh, this one the sword and like the cape on that side are. I'm not doing that with my Yoda, um, but that's just really like how you could do it. But I think it, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we'll look at his code at one point to see, but it could be using either a clip path would work if the image is too big. So maybe we'll try and do that. Um, if, if part of our image goes out, we'll see if we can clip it rather than having to do it in like image editing software. Awesome. So with that in place, you can see uh, we were here um, just really quick. I got the, the images actually brought in and I do have a little bit of CSS here, but nothing too much, just a max with them images, placing everything in the middle and a color scheme dark. So the background is dark by default um, is basically all we have there. Um, and I put the Yoda, which was our class here for the entire thing has the, I put a width of 350, um, just so we have a space to work with. Maybe we should throw an outline on there just so we can see, uh, three pixels, solid lime green should be a you know, fit with our style. We'll turn that off a little bit, but just so we can see what we're working with. And I think what I'm going to do here is an aspect ratio of, uh, 16 over nine, maybe. And right now that's not working, I think just because the images are there. Um, so it's stretching to fit despite my aspect ratio, which I wouldn't expect actually. Um, but that's not really going to matter too much because those two things, uh, let's come here and do a position of relative because everything inside of it. So dot Yoda and all the children will get a uh, position of absolute. And there we go. Uh, the 16 over nine is working, but I probably wanted nine over 16. So it would be taller, right? And I'm just thinking like this looks roughly like that type of aspect ratio there. Um, and it just so happens that it looks like it fits the Yoda picture perfectly. Uh, but that's sort of random luck. Like if I made this a bit taller, right? Um, so that's good. Let's bring the, let me think here. So the main thing is we 
only want Yoda to appear. The interesting thing here, and this is the part I'm not sure about, is the card's going to tilt back. Let's just put an opacity of zero. <laughs> opacity of zero on those. And yeah, so I, I definitely want that to tilt. Let's bring in my background image. So there's my background image coming in. Um, and you also notice my line numbers disappeared. I realized I was on the wrong profile for recording. Um, and so just to, you know, I just brought in a background image and we'll also come in with a background size of cover. And the problem with this image is the background position isn't great. Um, position is, let's just say, what if I did the right side? No, that's even worse. Uh, the, okay, I'm gonna have to muck around here and just to get one that's perfect. Uh, so I'll see you in a second. All right, there we go. Just a, a negative 150 and, and he ended up right in the middle. So that is perfect. Um, and then we want that hover effect to make it tilt. And I'm not sure on this, but let's try it. Uh, Yoda hover. And for this, we wanna do a rotate. I don't know if it, if it matters if we use the rotate or if we should do it with a transform. Let's just try rotate of 30 degrees, just for fun. Um, so that does that. So here what we wanna do is specify the axis. So rotate on the Y. Oh no, that's, <laughs> we want the X, X. There we go. The only problem with doing it like this is it looks like if I do like, a, I don't know, 75, um, it just looks like it's smushing down, which isn't what we want. So I think what we need to do here is add a perspective um, and I always, I never know what perspective to add to something and, or no, no, sorry. The perspective is going to go on the body. There we go. So by the body having, it always has to be the thing outside of w what you want to actually be rotating. So that sort of sets the scene. So our camera is now a thousand pixels away from the card. So now it actually lives in like a 3d space. So that's working, but obviously we don't need that much, maybe 30 degrees. 35, something like that, I think would look pretty good. And we can also just come here and we can transition that, transition the rotate for, I don't know, 300 milliseconds ease, just so we have something, right? There we go, perfect. Next, let's come take a look at his again. This is a lot slower. Oh, we have a shadow that appears underneath too. There's a lot of good stuff going on in here and not all of it I realized. So let's bring this up to like 700. I don't think it's that slow, but it was definitely a lot more, we could have a better timing function, but I think that's okay. Um, and it's probably a little bit smaller. So maybe we will go with 300. Um, and then this could be like a 15, 12. We have to play with our positioning now. I think we'll just stick, even if it's not exactly the same, it's okay. And we don't actually need that outline anymore because we have our card. So let's get that shadow coming in. So I'm actually gonna do the shadow using a pseudo element. And the reason I'm using a pseudo element, um, we're just do my after for now, is just for performance reasons. Um, it's a better way to uh, create shadows and stuff if you need to animate them. Um, it's just higher performance because animating shadows is really hard for the browser. So let's just say that this is going to be uh, the content we need, the uh, position, of uh, absolute, right? And then we're gonna do an inset of zero. Now, what I'm not sure about, let's just make the background red so we can see it. Uh, well, Z index negative one, so it goes behind. Oh no, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> um, the reason this is happening is the when we do a transform or any of the transform properties, which rotate even though it's its own property now, it is one it creates a new stacking context. So right now it is behind. Um, so here, if I did a inset of negative, uh, well, let's make it really big, 100 pixels, it's behind because of the negative Z index, but then it goes in front because of the rotation that's going on there, which is really annoying. And it's one of those things that definitely gets you when you try and do transitions on different stuff. Um, so that's not gonna work. <laughs> so maybe not the best solution, but Yoda is gonna come in here instead of being a background image. So let's just say Yoda, Yoda BG, uh, so it should be an image, <laughs> all right? Uh, dot Yoda BG. So now I brought Yoda BG in here as an image, but it's probably, I turned off the background image. Um, it's probably not gonna show up though. So let's turn off this. Uh, and the reason it's not showing off is we have everything getting the opacity of zero. So I'm actually gonna switch this to my Yoda, was it Yoda? No, it was just my logo and my front image. So the logo and the dot front image, we'll get that. 
Um, that means that my, I, I called it Yoda frame. So let's just make that a bit more consistent. Uh, we'll just call this uh, BG image. And that means here, this I'm gonna remove and my dot BG image will get these as objects instead, object fit of cover and the object position, uh, which means I, th I don't really need this to be a position absolute. I'm wondering if I need to bother. I might just be able to do height 100% um, and we should be okay with object fit cover. And then this becomes object position. There we go. We're back where we were. The advantage now is I think our red will always stay behind. Uh, and then we don't actually need, oh yeah, we're using position absolute here. Um, so what I might do here is actually just to make it easier position absolute, instead of worrying about negative Z indexes, um, I'm going to <laughs> position absolute. Uh, what did I do here? Z index, Z index <laughs> of 10. Um, instead of worrying about negative Z indexes, which sometimes can be kind of messy, we'll just layer things with Z index on this. Um, so this will actually become black, <laughs> so we can turn it into a shadow. Uh, let's just do a filter blur on it, because it's easy. And I'm gonna go with a pretty big blur, um, probably way too big. <laughs> Um, so we can see it's there, but now in an inset, what I'm actually going to do is an inset of like 100 pixels. No, let's say 20 pixels. Um, and then we're going to trans, and I could do insets doing top, bottom, left, and right, and bringing it in. So I could just move my bottom down, I guess, um, but I'm just going to transform it down. Um, so translate, um, we want to move it down. So it's going to be a zero on the X and I don't know negative 30 is negative up. I always get these mixed up. It is negative 60. Uh, sorry, 60 positive. It's down. Let's make it red so we can still see it really clearly. So it's there. Um, and again, I could do this easily with the inset there, but I think it's more fun to do it that way. I'm not sure why, but so what we're actually, and I guess for animating, this would be better anyway, because the idea is that this will actually start here maybe what we'll do, um, let's just make this inset like a 1.25 rem. And the reason I'm doing that is I want my inset to be a little bit more than the blur. See how we see a little bit of that shadow there, which probably isn't the end of the world, but just to try and bring it in enough. Um, if we go two, we probably lose it. Let's, uh, we'll do go with the 1.5. I think it's going to be super subtle. And then my Yoda hover, I should probably group everything. We could even use nesting. Um, if we wanted to, I don't know. Um, my CSS will be a bit messy here because in general, I don't try and do things perfectly. I try and get them to work and then I would refactor this to organize it a lot more. So we're not going to worry about the refactoring. We're just going to worry about it getting it working right now. Um, the after Yoda hover after yes. Um, we'll get a translate and we said about zero and then a 60 pixels roughly. So it goes down and then we're going to trans the trans uh, translate uh, 300 milliseconds. This is also where having, um, oh, we changed that. So because as soon as you do this and you have to have like, oh, I might change this timing function. Let's just do var any uh, timing. That, that makes sense, right? Timing. Uh, and that way we can sort of have the same timing easily. We might find that we actually need to change it, but um, if that happens, then whatever. Eventually that does happen. Uh, then we change it. <laughs> we'll, we'll just do our timing here at 700, 700 milliseconds. So there we go. I think the, the rotation might be a bit too much. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, the other thing we could actually do, like the shadow is sort of just sliding out. His looks a lot better. It looks like the shadow is like in... I think I'm just going to change how much it's going. You want it to look... I mean, the shadow, the problem here too, is the shadow is actually rotating along with it, which we don't really want. I'm wondering if I could actually do, um, rotate. What was my rotation <laughs> on the, the original one? Um, rotate, rotate, where were we? Oh, here, the X 35. So let's just grab this rotate, uh, that's right here and we can bring it here and this would become a negative 35. 
Um, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I thought that would work. Uh, let's try one thing here on my Yoda. I'm not sure if this will work, but because the shadow is actually a pseudo element, it's a child of the Yoda. So I'm going to do a trans, I always forget what this is. Is it, is it here? I can do it. No. How do I do this again? Um, <laughs> I, I remember this. I mean, this happens, right? Preserve 3d. I know that's the transform style transform style preserve 3d there we go sometimes we have to google stuff and that's fine aha so it is working uh the problem is now what's actually happened is our card is going like this and the shadow is going like that and because it's in the same 3d plane it's piercing through uh, and that looks terrible so that doesn't work and we went down a bit of a rabbit hole that i guess we don't want to bother with um it, th there might actually be ways of preventing oh you know what i could do actually Mm, I still think it would actually cause a problem. But I'm going to try it before we, we ditch this. Um, is instead of an inset of this, the inset on the top will be um, 80%, 1.5, 1.5, 5, 5, and 1.5 rem. So 80% is the top now. So if I do it, see how it's only at the bottom? The, yeah, so it, we're still getting the same thing because it's just rotating on a smaller plane. I might be able to move the where the transform is happening with the transform origin and prevent that because I could probably give it, but I think I'm fighting a losing battle. Um, and people who know more about 3D stuff are probably like, no, no, this is possible, but, um, or, you know, okay, we're try one more thing. Just thought of that as I was talking, I could pull it backwards more with a, so instead of a translate zero, I'm actually gonna do a trans, or we could leave that um, and then do a translate, a transform, translate Z. Uh, and this is the interesting thing, and it can be kind of weird, um, but let's just try negative, I don't know, 200, 300 pixels um, and see what happens. Ooh, see, it, it, it's really muck now though, because the, the 3D-ness of it, it, I think this could work, but the idea with this is I'm actually pulling it backwards so see it's there and then it sort of runs away um i don't know why oh maybe transition there what if i did this as the rotate here to rotate of our timing and um, so we're transitioning both of them would that help oh it does help so I don't know if this is perfect, but because it was piercing my card, I'm just pulling it backwards now. So it, it can't pierce it with the, the transform here. And having the translates and a transform for a translate can be weird, but it just means this is always in place because I'm only transitioning the rotate, uh, or here the rotate and the translate. Uh, so I'm never actually touching the transform itself, even though this is a translate and that's a translate. It's kind of weird, but it can be handy having these as separate things sometimes. Um, and now what I'm thinking is this maybe becomes bigger so we can see it a little more. I'm not even sure if this is a good idea um, or not. Uh, it doesn't really have the effect I was hoping it would do. It doesn't match what his is. Um, I'm going to shrink these because we pulled it backwards. I think it needs to be whatever. I, I'm going to leave it like that. We're going down a big rabbit hole and like a small part of the effect. And now that it's black, I think it looks a little bit better. Um, ideally it would actually be a little bit more like you'd see it growing a little bit as it's happening, but I think we're, I think that's good enough for what we're sort of doing here. Um, and I might drop this back to 30 degrees. Okay. So I guess <laughs> went down a, a long rabbit hole, but that's okay. These things are fun and it's, you know, we're mucking around trying to match something. So that's okay. Um, let's, uh, <laughs> we want to get that cool effect coming in though, right? With the, the guy that pops up like that but we also have the shadow effect on the back and that I think we're gonna do with another pseudo element. <laughs> so let's come in here with the Yoda before. Um, and this is where like we could, we if I was refactoring this now, like we have double code for nothing because we're gonna do a position absolute here as well. So we could definitely have like a comma separated selector for both of these. 
Um, but then my inset on this is going to be zero. And let's do it in a background of lime again. And we have lime and lime green, two different colors. Uh, Z index, this time we had a 1, 10, let's just do 100 for now so we can see it. And what I think I want to do is a background image. Um, and I, I often do this, I'll set a background and then put the background image if I'm doing a gradient, just so I can s keep the color <laughs> what I want it to be. And that should keep the color on there. Um, so background image will be a radial gradient, which I'm terrible with, but we're going to try. Uh, it's going to be a circle. I don't know how big we want it to be. So let's just try, let's just say we're 350, 300 wide. So what if I did 500? I want it to be bigger and it's going to be transparent in the middle, transparent, and then we're going to go to black. Um, and I think then here the transparent will go up to like 400 pixels. Uh, and maybe this actually needs to be bigger. Maybe I don't even need a size on it. 300? Did I break it? Oh, no, there it is. Okay, that's sort of what I want, but it's it looks terrible. Um, but if we look here, see how like the corners darken? And I don't want that to have to be two elements. Um, but if I turn off the lime now, it might actually be okay. Um, and I what I think we'll do here is just put this at opacity opacity of zero, and then my uh, Yoda hover before we'll get an opacity of one, right? Because we just want that to appear and we want it to appear slowly. So we'll do a transition of our um, opacity, sorry, I had a brain fart there and we want it to be my var timing. So it's coming, it's a little subtle, but I definitely see it. Let's just change the color here to red uh, once again, just so we can See, you can see it come in and out now. So my picture is really dark to begin with, so the you know we don't see it as much. Um, and that terribleness of it though sort of isn't as bad as we had. You can definitely see it is darkening up on the top. Maybe I'll make this actually like 150. Um, I don't know if that's too exaggerated or not, but we'll go with that to sort of get the shadow coming in on the top and the bottom. Um, whatever. I'm not going to worry about fine tuning that too much. We went down enough of a rabbit hole with that bottom shadow. <laughs> uh, let's get to the fun part now of the effect of the guy coming in. Um, so this is probably going to stay like that. And then we're going to say, let's do Yoda first. So, or do we do, let me just take a look. Oh, the logo is always there. Uh -oh. oh no. And it's not in the 3d plane. And neither is that I might, uh, no, okay. I think we'll be okay. Um, I hope I didn't muck myself up by putting it all in the 3D thing. I might have been better off having a container that was doing that. We'll see. Um, this is where things get a little mucky. Uh, so logo will take off from, or no, what we'll do is this. Take off opacity zero, and then we're going to come in with the front image and do an opacity of zero on that for now. So if we take a look, my logo, okay, so let's just do the logo itself, logo Z index. It has to be on the top, so we'll do a thousand. There it is. Uh, let's do a filter. Can't we change the color this way? Brightness, and we'll just do like 100%. Does that not work? One? I don't know how brightness works. <laughs> what are the other filters we have? I know I can do this. Brightness, contrast, maybe. Uh, so I, yeah, I found the invert. I'm just inverting the color of it. It's a quick, easy hack. I would ideally want to change the colors of this. Um, let's go in with a width, uh, width of 75% maybe. So it's a bit smaller. And then will this work? Margin inline of auto to center it? No, because it's position absolute. Um, but what we're going to do is an inset of auto for the top. So it's going to push it all the way down. Uh, the left and the right will get a zero and then the bottom will get like a one rem for now and that will also center it. Maybe that will be a two rem. Um, and the reason that's centering now is the width is 75, but we have the inset left and right. So the left and the right properties are zero. So it, the space it has to live is full size and then the margin in line works. So what I'm not sure about, <laughs> we're going to try 
this is where the rotation thing might go off the rails a little bit and it might have been better to separate these two things but we're gonna see can I do a negative rotation if we do that it does but we do sort of want some depth in that anyway right we have a little bit of layering so and we don't want it to always be that though so but I'm gonna start it there so it's rotated a bit um, so then here we can do our transform, and that was the translate Z, right? Translate Z. What, how far, like, let's just find out how far uh, forwards we need to come before we're not intersecting. So 20 pixels seems to be enough, uh, which is great. And what we'll do is, let's just make this our tr transition. Uh, the transition will be for my let's just say var timing we'll just leave it on everything for now um and if we we're going to worry about everything like we, you know if we want to optimize that a little bit by saying what we're actually animating we can do that after uh so then we have my yoda hover we'll have my logo and the logo will get these two properties on it oh it does work perfect so it's rotating at the exact opposite speed as the rest of it so it just looks like it's staying the same so if I take this and I put it here just for fun, um, I think it's maybe more consistent because then the depth of it is not changing. I'm not actually sure. Does that look different than if it's here? Very similar. I think, okay. So because we're, we're doing the transform and we're going to change that anyway, um, maybe it'd be better not doing it, but let's also come here and just say translate Y and it's going up by like one RAM or something. And I know I'm mixing pixels and RAMs and it's all a bit messy. Uh, why is that happening too? Oh, because we're going down. Negative. Ah, there we go. <laughs> that confused me for a second. Um, just because I think it just looks like it pops up a little bit, right? And I think we're going to make it a little bit smaller. Let's do a 65%. Hmm. It really is just sliding up. Maybe I just need to do it a bit more. Um, we'll do the two. My seven, my, okay, my timing function, see this is where I think we're gonna drop this back down now. See, the problem is, okay, so I'm actually gonna keep the Z, um, the problem I see right now is the Z, it, the logo looks like it's actually getting bigger because it is moving closer toward us. Um, so now I just need to find in my complete mess of code here, this translate Z should, so the two choices we have, um, I could break these off into how I was doing it before, or I could just say that here, this is at zero and this is at 20. So this one is staying the same. So now it should look like it's moving up and down and not so much. I don't feel like it has that same, the timing function maybe could be changed on it a bit too. This makes me feel like I don't know if it's part of the rotation, part of my timing. Something feels a little bit off, but I'm going to stick with it for now um, because I'm going to sort of use that same idea. It really just looks like it's rising and going down. I don't know. Maybe this does too, and I'm just thrown off by the way my thing is rotating. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm changing. I'm like, what? Um, so this, I'm, I wanted to change my overall rotation. Uh, and this is somewhere where we're having this as, um, oh, I changed that to 30. I changed the wrong one to 30 before. Um, I'm thinking I don't want my card to rotate as much now. And this is where if I had it all as a, see, I sort of like that better now. Um, if I had this as a custom property, it would make my life easier to make changes to it. So we can put in um, the rotation which now is 20 degrees. And the reason for that is just if I update one of them, it, I can update everything at once, rotation. Um, and these are the types of little things I sort of do as I'm working and I go, okay, now I, you know, I'm realizing that this would be um, better. So here, because this is a negative, I just use a calc of negative one time, or usually I do the other way, var rotation times negative one. Um, what I would do now is I'm doing this really simply too. I'm doing it like timing rotation. Uh, these are probably not the best custom property names, uh, but they'll work for now. 
And so uh, what I would do normally is I would, when I do refactor this to organize the code a little bit more and get it cleaner is then I would also worry about the naming of things a little bit. Maybe I make them cust like locally scoped only uh, or I give them more specific names. So I know that it's for like this thing that I'm working on and I broke everything by doing this. <laughs> Uh, why is it broken? It is rotation, right? That I called it. Oh, rotate. Oh, it's just, I called it rotation everywhere. So we'll bring that. There we go. Perfect. Um, so we have that going. Now we just need the, yeah, that actually, I, for some reason that feels better to me. And now we need the Yoda to actually appear. There's like a, is there a delay or is it just a delay on the hover? I'm not sure. I don't think I'll go with the delay. So it's just basically sliding up and the opacity going. And the cool part is that it overflows out the top is why that, I, I think anyway, why it ends up looking good. So that means that my Yoda hover uh, dot front image, and it's going to get an opacity of one. And so we need to transition everything. So we'll just do the same thing, var timing. Um, Right, and let's go look here. So now when we hover the front image, oh, our Z index now, Z index of 100 probably. I have a thousand for the logo. So there we go, he shows up. Perfect, except it's not transitioning. Why not? Is it? Oh, uh, so the Z index should be on this one. Um, so what's happened, Z index isn't animatable. So I think it is, yeah, he is fading in. Um, and I might change his timing function a little bit there. But uh, what was happening basically is the Z index isn't animatable. So it just sort of would appear it's either, or sorry, it, you can't like slowly move your Z index. You can animate it in that it will go from zero to whatever number you put, but it's instant. Um, so I think he was fully opaque and then just showed up at the front. Maybe I'm wrong um, on why that was looking like it did. Um, but I think that's what was going on. So let's actually, uh, I'm going to scale him up a little bit and I think I might just leave the opacity at one for now while I'm working on this and let's do a 1.25. Um, and one of the reasons I'm doing the bigger scale, it sucks my glows. I, I would fix that. Definitely. I put the max with the hundred, um, and see, this is where we might want to try and clip his thing. Um, so maybe I'll do a three, five. I don't think I'm going to bother, but I think a clip path, we could cut that off. Um, and then let's say the, we're doing that. So I could say bottom zero. No, right. Bottom zero. Oh, cause we're scaling. Uh, can I do transform origin of bottom? Ah, that's easier. There we go. Uh, cause scale normally happens from the center. I don't want to scale from the center. I want to scale from the bottom. So I don't have to try and reposition it and magic number his feet into the right spot. Um, so we're actually going to, I think, do something very similar here. This is going to be different though, but let's just see if this works. Uh, dot Yoda hover dot front image and then put the opacity to zero. Let's just see what this looks like. It's the right idea, right? Except he's also going on top of my logo. Z index of a hundred, Z index of a thousand. Hmm. That's kind of weird. We'll figure that one out. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure. Just for fun. Okay. It must be with, I'm not sure. The, with the turning and everything that's going on, just because this is smaller, I'm not 100% sure. Or because the rotation is from the bottom. I don't know. But it's giving me the effect that I want. Um, oh, I know why. Maybe. That? I don't think that would do anything though. I might scale him down actually a little now, uh, two, five. I just sort of want him to pop up the top mostly. So I'm pretty happy with actually how that's looking. And I'm, I'm actually wondering if that just for fun, um, if I do a transform origin, It has something to do, I think, with the Z indexing. So I might have to play with my Z indexes a little bit on this. Um, so let's take the front image off of here now that we know that actually does work. Um, and we'll put it the Yoda hover 
front image is there. I'm going to steal all of this and then just change some values in it. Um, so let, let's uh, actually, let's just try changing this is translate Z here to see if that helps him stay behind. It's so weird. I, okay, so I, I put this to negative 10 now for and it seems to be working. I honestly think maybe the transform origin is changing because he's rotating from his feet. And with the scale coming in, there's something happening, but it works. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. I thought I'd have to play more with the timing functions on it. Um, he do, it does seem to grow upwards, but I thought I'd have to work on that a little more. But it seems just to, it feels like it, it's doing what I want it to do as I'm doing that. So I'm actually really happy with that. Um, <laughs> I just noticed he's not, oh, because of the Z index maybe, he's not actually on the bottom anymore, but that's fine. Um, you know, neither were they. So <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm actually thinking, let me just look at his card again. Maybe it's because of the images. Yeah, I think we're okay actually. I'm, I, there we go. I think that's actually worked out really well. Uh, and we, we got a lot definitely needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, I think there's some things in here. Maybe there's some improvements you could let me know about, or if you know about some of the things I'm not too sure about. Uh, when I would clean this up, I would definitely go through my dev tools and sort of poke around a little bit to try and understand everything that's happening in here in a bit more detail to clean it all up. But as a first draft, I'm really happy with that. I got the effect that I wanted to get down. Um, and yeah, I think it looks really good. So if you like this style of video where I'm trying to figure things out and it's not this clean, polished type of demo that's ready to go and you wanna see a bit more of my thought process and how I work my way through any given problem, I have a playlist of other videos just like this one are right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Johnny, Tim, Simon, Michael, James, and Andrew, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.